that is Purna, this is Purna. From Purna manifests Purna. I have added that and this here because in the very first line, it is talking of two Purnas explicitly. It is telling that Purna and this Purna. Purna Adaha Purna Idam. So I am continuing that. From that Purna manifests this Purna. And when this Purna re is removed from that Purna, what remains is again Purna. When it says well, when Purna is removed from that Purna, what remains is again Purna. It is talking about limitlessness or infinity. And, and that's how it is usually understood by most of the teachers. And they will say that mm, in mathematics, this is how it is. If you remove infinity from infinity, what remains is infinity. If you add infinity to infinity, what remains is infinity. Multiply infinity to infinity, what remains is infinity. Like this, this is uh, this strangeness of infinity. And the talk, any talk about infinity becomes trivial, meaning you cannot make any sensible statement. You cannot add one plus one into two. One plus one is equal to two. You cannot make any rational, sensible statement. You cannot make any differentiation. Whatever you do, you will end up with the same thing. It is as good as not talking about it. But uh, there is indeed something more to this. And this is not philosophical speculation, fortunately. It would have been philosophical speculation 150 years ago. But fortunately, today it is no more philosophical speculation. It is pure mathematics. It is mathematically known that it is no more this talk of infinity, infinity, remaining infinity, and it's not that anymore. There is something in mathematics which says that there is something more to infinity. I will try to tell it quickly. Purpose of this is not to give you a mathematics lesson, and I'm not going, <laughs> not going to go into mathematics, the details of it either. I'm just going to state the things. If you're interested, you can go and read it. Now, in mathematics, you know, <clears throat> there are, this is the basic thing you will learn in first standard, second channel, probably natural numbers. Sometimes zero is not included. Sometimes it is, I've included zero. So natural numbers, you have zero, one, two, three. And how many natural numbers are there? If you talk of the set, set theory, set of natural numbers, how many natural numbers are there? infinite. But what one mathematician did 150 years ago, I think he's a German mathematician. His name is Cantor. So he tried to look into it, whether there is something more to this infinity than this trivial talk of everything is infinity, infinity, infinity. So he started off with this. Now natural numbers is a set of infinite elements. So instead of simply calling it infinite, he introduced a term called cardinality and he, the size, cardinality means size of the infinite set. And he called it something, let, let us call it alpha. Now the size of natural numbers, we're talking of infinity, but we're talking of size. It's paradoxical, but you will come to know that it really has something later. So we are talking of infinity and the size of infinity. Cardinality, that's a technical term for it. So the, he said cardinality of natural numbers, let it be something, let it be alpha. Now the purpose is, now the objective is to find out, is there any universal set which is bigger than this one? Can you mathematically, very strictly mathematically, not simply speculative, with, by using logic, by using rational methods, by using mathematical procedures, can you prove that there is another infinite set which is bigger than this. Can you talk of a bigger infinity? That is the objective. So now then, <clears throat> you know that after natural numbers, the next thing that you start is integers. And integers, as you know, has the other half. They have negatives. So you are, with your simplistic understanding, you would say that the size of the integer set which is also an infinite set, would be two alpha. Now, this is simple uh, speculation. 
Okay, we are doing simple speculation, but he came up with the mathematical procedure through which they could compare infinite sets. I'm not going, going, going to go into that details now. It will become something else. So he came up with a method. It's called one-to-one -one correspondence method, something. <clears throat> and he found that although it is supposed to be two alpha, the cardinality has to be double. Finally, it becomes alpha only. It gets reduced to alpha. So although the size of the integers, the number of integers, intuitively, you say double. It's double the natural numbers. Still, when you look at the whole set, the infinite set, the size of those two infinities become the same. They are unable to mathematically show it that the latter, the integers set, is bigger than the natural set. Then they found, they went one step ahead. The next is rational numbers. Rational numbers means uh, which are of the form P by Q, where P and Q are integers. 1 by 2, 2 by 3, 3 by 4, anything. Now, rationals, as you can see, is a combination of two integers, which means you can have, if you, I, again, I won't go into the details, the size of this infinite set will be alpha into alpha. It has to be alpha squared. It has to be mathematically, if you have to talk of simple logic. If the <clears throat> size of one set is 5, size of another set is 5, multiply both the sets, you will get 25 elements. So size of the rationals, which are also infinite, has to be alpha to alpha squared. But then again, he employed his mathematical procedure to find out whether the alpha squared becomes bigger than alpha. And he found that it doesn't. Finally, that also reduces to alpha. Remember, we are talking about infinities. And therefore, this is happening. So at some point, it looked like uh, we will not have a non-trivial theory of infinite. This is called trivial theory. Trivial theory means you cannot talk everything, whatever you do infinity, whatever you say infinity, that means you cannot make any sensible statement because for logic to function, you need difference. You have to show some difference. Only then you can make a logical statement. So if you say everything is infinity, infinity, it becomes trivial. Mathematically, it's called trivial solution. You cannot do anything with it. So it looked as if we are stuck with this triviality. But he did something, something genius. It is considered genius by mathematicians. It is actually very simple. You, you can understand it. It does not require any advanced uh, mathematical knowledge. If you go and see Cantor's proof, you can understand it yourself, provided it is written in a simpler language. Next in sequence is obviously real numbers. Real numbers means any kind of number you can think of, basically. It can go up to any uh, decimal point. After decimal point, you can have any number of digits. Irrational numbers, basically. It includes everything. It includes natural numbers, integers, rationals, irrationals, and much more, except complex numbers, imaginary numbers. So if you look at real numbers, and they did some uh, mathematical analysis, and they found that the cardinality of real numbers, which are also infinite in number, the cardinality of real numbers comes to 2 alpha, two, sorry, 2 to the power alpha. And again, don't uh, simply say this has to be bigger than alpha. Again, they had to do some mathematical operation. They had to employ that correspondence operation upon this. Compare it with natural numbers, compare it with integers to find out whether 2 to the power alpha is actually bigger than alpha or not. And with his uh, revolutionary derivation, this particular mathematician showed that the cardinality, <clears throat> when the cardinality is 2 to the power alpha, it is greater than alpha which means now we have mathematically shown that there can be infinities of different sizes. We are now talking of infinities of different sizes, which means now we can talk, make a logical statement about infinity. Are you following? Now we can sim simply dismiss it saying, oh, whatever you do with infinity, it is finally infinity. You cannot talk like that and dismiss it. 
mathematically it has been categorically proven that there are different sizes to infinity and real numbers is one such set of infinite numbers which is obviously greater than the set of natural numbers, integers and rationals. Now, we not only do we have different sizes of infinity, we also have different kinds of infinity, actually. All these above ones, they're all quantized. Quantized means they're discrete. They are jumps, like naturally, one, two. There's nothing between one and two. So from, from one, it goes to two, from two, it goes to three, like that. Integers are also discrete. Rationals are also discrete. They may be much more in number compared to natural numbers. But still, they are discrete. Rational numbers are also discrete. They also go in jumps. So in other words, all the above ones are quantized. They are discontinuous. They are, they are, in, they are infinite, but they are discontinuous. They are infinite, but they are limited. It's a paradox, but it is mathematically shown. That's why I'm talking. We are no more talking philosophy. Please uh, remember that. So we are talking of infinity that is limited. We are talking of infinity that has some kind of handicap. Whereas the other one is a continuum. Real numbers are no more quantized. They are no more moving in jumps. They are no more moving in steps. They are no more discontinuous. It is a continuum. So why I am telling you all this is, if you understand this, you can see that this exactly matches what is told in the invocation mantra of the Upanishads. What Upanishad is referring to as Purnam Adaha is a continuum infinity. What it is referring to as Idam is a quantum infinity. One, it is, one is a continuous infinity, another is a discontinuous infinity. And this, I have named it as that and this, Adaha and Idam. As you can see, this comes out of that. But that cannot come out of this. It's not mutual. And the mantra is also not talking about mutual. It is only telling that one comes out of the other. It doesn't say the other comes out of the first one. So what the mantra says is that is infinite. This is also infinite. But this infinite has come out of that. And when you have taken this infinite out of that infinite, that infinite remains as it is. It doesn't lose anything. Continuum doesn't lose anything if you remove the quantum infinity out of it. It still remains a continuum. So we are not talking about different sizes of infinity. We are also talking about different size, uh, different kinds of infinity. Now, <clears throat> why I am telling you all this mathematics? Of course, I have connected it to the Upanishadic mantra. Uh, but what is the use of talking all this? Now this will become knowledge gathering for you. If I leave it at this, how oh, you know you know two kinds of infinites, you know different kinds of infinites. You have gathered some knowledge. That is not the purpose. I'm telling you all this. To point out that you have both these kinds of realities in your experience. And a lot of things will open up actually if you go into this matter of continuum. A lot of things will open up. They are very, very subtle. If you are very inattentive, very quick, you will miss all that. But it is, if you carefully go into it, you will see continuum means a lot of things than it seems to you presently. Now, both these kind of things, both kinds of realities, quantum reality, as well as a continuous reality, both are there in your experience. So now we did some uh, mathematical understanding. Let us correlate it to our experience. 